Typically, when resin 3D printing, you wanna make sure that the environment that you're working in is toasty and warm. If it's too cold, you're gonna have a really hard time resin 3D printing anything. And earlier this year, Elegoo released some amazing new 3D printers. They also announced a new $50 heater unit that I just got my hands on. So let's test this out in a really crazy way. All right, so let's see what's inside the box here. We've got some tools here, Allen wrench, some screws, a basic manual here that I'm assuming is going to be how to install it. Yep, here how to install it and what each of the functions are on it. It's just a basic heater unit here, but it's also got a filter in it as well, which is great. And it even comes with some extra filters that you want to make sure that we actually is there already one. Ooh, there is. There's already one in there. These are the carbon filters that go in here. And then there is the back plate that's gonna connect to the actual 3D printer that this is gonna mount to. Then we also have a power adapter. Oh my goodness. That is a seriously large brick. I <laughs> wasn't expecting that, but I guess it's because this is gonna draw a lot of power to heat this up. And when it comes to the installation, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. On the back side of most of your printers should be a port that is an exhaust port that's there. We're gonna remove the backing of that and then replace it with the provided backing sheet. And before installing the white backing plate, make sure that the holes are positioned upward and then you can place that on the backside of your printer and install it with the included screws. Then align the backside of the heater unit so that the power button slides through the opening and then you can mount the heater to the backside of the backing plate. All right, so I have two heaters and I got one installed on the Saturn IV Ultra and one on the Mars V Ultra. And what's nice about the Saturn IV Ultra is obviously it has the flip top lid here. So it's not gonna be bothered with that at all. So you can just leave it in the back. With the Mars 5 Ultra, on the other hand, every time you lift off this lid, it's gonna come with it. Also, as far as I know, there is no way to actually set the temperature. It looks like it fluctuates between about 24 degrees Celsius up to 26 degrees Celsius. Also, there's no way to set it to Fahrenheit. Now, ideally, I would have loved to have seen these built directly into these 3D printers or the best solution that I can think of is where it actually heats up the vat. These actually heat up the entire print chamber. So I'm gonna be interested to see how these fare with printing things with supports or larger models. And I'm gonna be testing that out. Now, in theory, this could end up working on other resin 3D printers or the older Mars 3D printers. However, it's probably gonna need some kind of printable stand for it because there is a fan sucking in air on the bottom here. It's not very powerful, but you're gonna need something to have this lifted off of the surface of the printer so that airflow can feed into it. I should also mention that I had the air conditioning running in here to try and make it as cold as it possibly can. And the temperature reader here is saying it's 68 degrees, which isn't super cold by any means, not really replicating a garage or cold winter months. It's still August here. So it's not getting entirely too cold here in the studio. But regardless, I wanna get some prints up and running so that we can get an initial test on these and then we'll do something crazy. And while these are printing, I want to say thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. They're the makers of the Saturn IV Ultra and the Mars V Ultra that we're using for these prints. Not only do they have the tilting vat mechanism that enables them to print incredibly fast, but they're also easy to get up and running and work with. They also make the heater unit that I've installed in both of these 3D printers. If you're interested in more information about any of Elgu's products, you can find links to those down below. And first up is a quick one hour and 15 minute print with the Soraya Tech resin. This is a Titan Forge set of miniatures here that I was very excited to see printed properly with the heater in place. I wasn't really expecting these to fail by any means because I've used this exact same exposure setting and this resin on this printer in the past and it's worked flawlessly. And one quick test that I decided to do since these worked out so well is I decided to drop the exposure setting even further to 1.6, which is a good bit lower than I typically print with with this resin and everything still printed properly. Now, one bonus of this is obviously with the heater in place, I was able to print these at an even lower exposure setting, which means a faster print time. This only netted me an extra five minutes in savings, but these are really small print files. And while it was only five minutes, it could potentially be even more drastic if I was printing something a lot larger. And since that worked so well, I decided to go and print something with this Shadow Essence Red Resin. I previously did a video on this and it's a notoriously difficult 
difficult resin to work with, but provide some amazing results for your prints. And these Hellboy busts are by Aspen72, and they took three hours and 34 minutes to print, and extremely happy to see that the supports maintained and held contact with the prints throughout the entire printing process, and the results of these prints in this resin look so good. This deep red color, it's got a bit of durability to it, as well as elasticity to each of these prints after they've been dried and cured. Next, I wanted to try and print with a new resin that I've never worked with on the Saturn IV Ultra, and that's this Prusament Ultraviolet Purple Resin. So I ran an exposure tester and then found the exposure that I needed for it, and then got a print up and running, and this is is the new Iron Doom file from Photos Mint, and this bust came out looking so good. This was just a spectacular all around looking print. It printed flawlessly here on the Saturn IV Ultra in this deep purple resin. I'm now wondering if I could have printed this in one of the even lower exposure options that I ran in that initial calibration test. But the details on this, especially the cape, turned out so good. And we know the heaters work really well in a controlled environment here, like in my studio, but it's still the summertime and it's not entirely too cold inside. So let's take our Saturn IV Ultra and bring it back to my house and get it set up outside and get some prints running overnight. Yeah, I do not recommend that you go ahead and try this, but I wanted to replicate getting a printer running in a cold environment, something like your garage or maybe a basement where it's going to be relatively colder than the other areas of the inside of your house. So having the temperature somewhere in between the 50s and 60s here and letting a print run overnight would be a pretty good test. Plus, we're going to be using this Shadow Essence Red Resin that again is pretty difficult to print with, but I'm hoping the heater will do us some justice here. And unfortunately, our first attempt at this did not go as planned. The print started breaking away from the build plate, and I think it's because I had my bottom exposure set too low, and I didn't preheat anything before starting this print. So I went and re-sliced it at a higher bottom exposure, and I'm gonna let this run overnight, and I am happy to see that the next morning here, around seven in the morning, this is wrapping up, and it's looking flawless. And here's our Deadpool bust printed outside in the Saturn IV Ultra. This took five hours hours and 42 minutes to print and it worked perfectly. All the details are there. It's nice and crispy and clean. Yes, this resin is typically difficult to work with, but I honestly think that heater is going to help really make it more effective when it comes to actually printing with this type of resin. Also, I'm happy to see that even though it's ambiently heating inside the printer, none of my prints broke free of the supports during the printing process. Let me know what your thoughts are on these new Elegoo heaters. I'll have links to those down below if you're interested in picking one up. I'd be interested in hearing what other kind of heating solutions you you all work with. Obviously, I'm hoping in the next iteration of these resin 3D printers from Elegoo that we have something directly baked into the vats of the 3D printers or just directly into the 3D printers to help provide a heat source to it so that we don't have an extra power supply that you have to worry about or have it automatically turn on and off when you're starting and stopping your print jobs. And I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making videos like this here. If you're interested in my resin 3D printer settings that I use for my resin 3D printers, you'll find those over in my Patreon. And again, please don't take your resin 3D printers outside and try resin 3D printing out in the sun or anything like that. I just like doing goofy things here for videos. Hey, thanks so much for watching you all and I'll see you next time. And check this out. I ran that exact same Iron Doom print, but without the heater on and it failed epically.